Hey, and welcome back to Reality with me, Daisha D. Uh, this week's episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, we're on episode nine. I missed y'all last week, but I've noticed that nothing really happens in one episode, and then the following episode, we get a little more substance, you know what I mean? So let's get started. Uh, the episode kicks off, we see Kenya in Monietta shooting for her commercial for Kenya Moore Hair Care. Um, her theme is like HBCU marching band meets majorette. And it was really cute. She had Brooklyn with her dancing. Um, we see, I think his name is Roy, who owns Kill Me Crazy franchise. He comes to visit her. He brings food and all of that good stuff. She seems to like him. He seems nice. But for some reason, I just don't see that being someone that's like she's going to stick with long term, which is okay. I mean, she's just dating and having fun. So if she's happy, I am happy for Kenya. I mean, that's really all we saw of that. But I think uh, she's expanding because I know she was in Sally's and now she's going to expand some more. But I don't think she's announced it yet. If I'm, I, I think I'm correct on that. She hasn't announced it yet. Then we see like a small little snippet with drew her mom and then her older sister which i didn't know they had a 20 year age gap between them um i guess black really doesn't crack unless you do it <laughs> anyway um her sister was very vulnerable about how she was in a pretty tumultuous relationship that involves some intimate partner violence and um she just speaks to needing to take time away from being Drew's manager and trying to rebuild herself, honestly. Uh, I can only imagine. I know that based on statistics, it takes on average seven times before uh, someone leaves their abuser for good. So, you know, and honestly, during that time when they're trying to leave them, that's the most dangerous time because you don't, that person is not thinking logically, the abuser that is. They're not thinking logically and they could end up hurting that person or unaliving them. So um, I thought that was, that took a lot of courage for her to speak about on such a large platform, but it is something that happens every day. And uh, the conversation is needed. And I hope that the right people saw it and hopefully they'll start to kind of look at themselves and look at their situations and, and get some help, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we got to see her talk with her mom and her sister. And she seems really close with her family, which is a good thing. Because now that we know her and Ralph are going through this messy divorce, she's going to need all the support she can get. We see Sheree have a sit down dinner with the OGs. She it was It was Kim. Deshaun and Lisa Wu. We have not seen all of those ladies together since Real Housewives aired. And that had to be, <laughs> what? Uh, before 2010, I wanna say, maybe? But um, yeah, they just, they're catching up. They're talking about their love lives. They're talking about their divorces. Uh, Sheree shares that she's a grandma now. And Sheree invites them to the annual girls trip that always turns into let's hash out all our issues and discuss it like grown women and then we're gonna fight cuss each other out and then we're gonna go back to Atlanta and to our own silos and then we're gonna get together with the people we're aligned with they do this every year <laughs> they, they go on a girls trip they fight they argue they'll have some cute moments where everyone's getting along they're doing something fun but for the, the most part everything stays the same. You can't change zip codes and think that something is going to change within a relationship. The only time I've seen it change genuinely, I think was like with Portia and Nini when they went to Greece. But anyway, she invites them to go to Portugal, I want to say, and it's going to be the OGs, not versus, but and the current cast. Um, 
we shall see how that pans out. I will almost guarantee you that Kim will get into it with either Kenya or Candy. But I'm I'm gonna go with with uh, Kenya. I don't think Candy is gonna play into whatever type of drama they you know they bring to her. Um, and Deshaun is pretty chill. She's always been chill, even on her season. So I don't see her getting into anything crazy. And then last, we got to see Sonya host uh, Mommy Nation Brunch, which I really enjoyed this part of this episode. It was very positive. She had Kenya uh, playing the role as the auctioneer. Her initial goal was to raise, I think it was $50,000, but Kenya was like, girl, we got $50,000 alone at the Real Housewives table. Okay, let's let's pump it up to a hundred. But they ended up raising $78,000, which is a really big deal because that could provide housing or that will provide housing for at least 15 families for, for half a year. So kudos to Sonia um, and her mommy nation organization, I'll call it. Uh, that's, that's really, that's a really big deal, especially in cities like Atlanta where homelessness, uh, is on the rise. So I really like that. And then they had, she awarded, I want to say Sheree with like the OG mom, uh, and her son Cairo presented that. So that was a really sweet moment. Um, and Candy, we see Candy came in from her concert from Nashville drove herself to Atlanta to come to the brunch, and then she had to drive back that night. Now, I just want to point out the fact that Sonya has been a Finch straddler, right, between the Drew, Kenya Candy, and Marlo and Sheree. And it's interesting that so far, the people who are, like, actively showing up for her as a good friend are the ones who she sometimes straddles the fence on whether or not she'll have their back, you know what I mean? Or in line with them. So I just, I think it's interesting. And I'm trying to figure out at what point did things go left to the point where we are now <laughs> that everybody's watching it back and she is making like slick comments about them, them being Kenya and Candy. Um, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to figure out what happens. Is it in Portugal, do they start to get crazy in Portugal and then things just never, you know, get back on track? I don't know. Let's see. I'm ready for this Portugal trip, episode two of the Portugal trip specifically, because you know when they first get there, nothing really happens. All they do is get in the house, run to get the biggest room, and then they end on a cliffhanger. So the part two of the Portugal trip <laughs> is what I'm ready to see. But honestly, that was it of this episode. Nothing else really big happen, but it was, it, I enjoyed it. So join me again here next week for a little bit of reality with me, Daisha Deep.